So anybody who's been to any developer event in the last couple of years, and usually Android or Android Studios in the keynote, it's definitely you're the person that we get to see. You get to make all the cool announcements. And this year at I.O. was a particularly special one. Could you tell us about it? It was an incredible year. Uh, Android had a whole ton of developer announcements that we were super excited about. And I think uh, probably everybody knows Kotlin was at the top of our list and at the top Absolutely. of a lot of people's lists. I think. <laughs> So. You did a great job keeping that a secret, right? It was like such a big surprise yeah, and a great tough. reveal. That was really tough. It was uh, it was something the community had been asking us for again and again. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, um, one of the funniest moments behind the scenes was uh, about three weeks, I think, before I.O. we had O Labs, which is one of the events where we bring a, mm -hmm. a, a ton of uh, apps on stage. Er, we bring a ton of apps in just to help them get ready for O. So there are probably like 250 apps there, maybe 300, or uh, representatives from the uh, various top apps. And somebody in the audience asked Mike Claron, who's the director of the framework, okay. uh, Mike, what do you think about Kotlin? And when are you guys going to adopt Kotlin? <laughs> and of course, we had made the decision, and we were you know, just pulling up for I.O. Mike had actually helped me co-write the keynote speech, which we were rehearsing by then. And Mike, you could see his face you know, just kind of light up. And he turns to the person and he says, you know, there's a lot going on with Kotlin. And I'm sure you're seeing a lot. We're seeing everything you're seeing. And we just want you to know that. And I thought that, you know, as soon That's as he said that, answer. I know. If not, I thought he'd actually blown the whole surprise. So I immediately went and checked Reddit like the next afternoon because I, I thought, Oh, someone's going to be able to read through uh, between the lines, but nobody did, and it was a surprise. So that's that's good. And like social media lit up after it was announced. It, I it, think it, it was overwhelming. Yeah, well, I think it was just what um, it was what everyone wanted, and it was the right decision, and mm -hmm. everyone knew it was the right decision. So I think it was uh, really a credit to the community that they were so clear with us about like, look, this is the right thing to adopt. Uh, in fact, the um, uh, the way we've talked about it is entirely accurate. I think Kotlin's this incredible fit for the Android platform because it's so rare that you get a language that's so mature. I mean, it's a five-year-old language. It's highly mature. It's gone through a 1.0 stage. And yet you can adopt it uh, uh, into apps uh, completely integrated. So you can have a, an app that has Java code mm -hmm. and Kotlin code completely integrated. So right. at the point of announce, most languages are still in a developmental stage or an early stage. And Kotlin is really in a very mature state on a platform that is very widely scaled. So it was yeah. super unusual. And to have that plus the IDE support, because the same people designing the language built the IDE, was just amazing. And so I think we were really excited. About it was that. just perfect serendipity yeah. as well, right? Yeah. So it was the, the right time, the right stuff, and all that kind of thing. Now, you work on Android Studio primarily. Uh, I do. And you talk a lot about Android Studio. Yeah. So how are things going with Android Studio? They're going really well. OK. Yes. So just released version 3? Yes. Uh, version 3 is currently in Canary. Okay. Uh, the next stage for us after that will be beta. And uh, version 3 is the one that supports the uh, current release of Android. Right. Now, for a developer like me, an Android developer, I started cutting my Android teeth with Eclipse. Yep. And it was interesting. It had sure. its moments. And, you know, but it was still sure. it was great to have that power to be able to develop and deploy onto something. So yeah. Android Studio was the next logical step. And mm -hmm. I came from a world with Visual Studio beforehand. So mm -hmm. Android Studio felt much more familiar. And it was mm -hmm. exciting. But it's come a long way in the couple of years, right? And it has. And I think that really reflects the investment in the IDE. Mm -hmm. One of the things that happened for us was we realized several years ago that Android had scaled massively, and as Android scaled, the developer community was also scaling massively. And that's in, uh, you know, people think about uh, in a US based community, people who are in the US, but really, if you think about the European community is enormous, the, um, the Chinese developer community, Android is huge, the Indian community is exploding, Brazil, there's so many different places. And I think what had happened is we really outstripped the, the IDE, and we needed to invest very deeply to give developers what they needed. Mm -hmm. And developers were very articulate about the features they needed, which was awesome. And so what you're seeing really is a reflection of increasing investment in Android Studio. And that investment is continuing to increase. Right. And so there are a number of features that have come out in the past several years that I think are super exciting. And I think you should expect to see that continue. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's been right. a really fun time. So I have a couple of favorite features. Tell me. Yeah. Um, so I absolutely love the new assistants, particularly the Firebase assistants. That is so cool. You know, the original design for that feature was one where the you came in and there was just all this stuff. You had to connect here and do this yeah. and do that. And we looked at it and we thought, even we can't figure out how to get through that. Why don't we make it a step-by-step -step process? And I think the result is so useful because it's relatively straightforward. In fact, we're using that same 
assistant concept now with other uh, right. types of guided journeys through the IDE, and I think that's going to be a really good baseline. Yeah, I can't wait to see some of the others. Yeah. Like, so I've been writing a book on Firebase, and it cool. used to be, you, you made me rewrite all my chapters, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be that it was like, you know, go to the console, turn this on, turn that on, get the Google Services JSON file, download it, file the right, find the right folder in your app, put it in. Yeah. Now it's the Firebase Assistant, click a button. Even the dependencies cool. are added to the build up gradle. It's beautiful. I'm looking forward to seeing more. And then my other favorite is the emulator. Yes, right. the it emulator used, is amazing. It used to be that the scenarios you get in the emulator were kind of limited and yeah. you needed a real device to do it. But now there's just so much stuff happening in the emulator. And yeah. You've even added like the Google Play Store. So things like Google Play services will update automatically yep. as I'm building my apps for it. So thank yeah. you. Great work. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. Yeah, I, I feel like the emulator itself uh, particularly has come so far as, in terms of performance because it's right. so snappy and responsive now. It's actually yep. much faster for me to deploy under the emulator than a device. Yeah. And I, I typically do development on both. Uh, but also the feature set is really nice, like being able to turn network on and off and uh, yeah. uh, mocking maps is one of my favorite and yeah, things like that. So yeah, I think there's there's still a lot more we can do with the emulator. I um, I personally think uh, it'd be great to have it you know boot incredibly fast. I think uh, it would be wonderful to see the emulator have more features, especially things like uh, different types of network connectivity or things that developers in emerging markets talk about, yeah. even developers in the um, uh, US and Europe targeting those markets. So there's so much more that we can do, but I think it really is one where it's now a mainline part of the workflow. We don't release adoption stats, but it's just going through the roof. Yeah, People yeah. are using it. Yeah. Stephanie's oh. smiling now, but I gave her a hard time about the emulator okay. and Google Play services for a long time, but yes, that not is true. anymore. That is true. That is true. That was, uh, so. it's, yeah, that was a good, you were right. So. Do, do you have any favorite features yourself? I do. I think um, you, men you mentioned one of them. The emulator is definitely one of my favorites. I personally really like constraint layout. Uh, when the initial version of Constraint Layout came out, I was uh, playing with different layouts, and I find it super useful, especially in the new world where you're seeing a lot of dynamic form factors. Right. It's really useful to be able to de define things in relation to each other as yeah. opposed to having those static definitions. So that's a huge favorite for me. Nice. Um, there are little things that are my favorite. So I have like, big things like that, Constraint Layout, which obviously was a huge investment. Um, uh, the build time improvements, especially oh, yeah. if you've tried yeah. 3.0. Uh, and you have a huge project, uh, you will find the build and sync improvements are amazing. And I, you know, probably like you and other folks who are building big projects, I have some pretty big complex uh, apps. And the uh, incremental build times are just so much better. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I feel like that will probably be something we'll be working on for a long time because developers always tell us, "Well, you just can't make it too fast." It can never be too fast. Yeah. Actually, a funny story with that is that yeah. for me, like if for a lot of the small test apps that I've been building, mm -hmm. so many times, like I thought the app hasn't deployed to the emulator yet. Yeah. And it's like you know, so I have a previous version running, and then I compile and like get it to run the next version, and yeah. then I go away and do something for a couple of minutes, and then I come back and my and I think it's my old version is still there, but the new one is on there. Yeah. And I'm like, come on, hurry up, and then they don't realize the new one is there. And it's just, it's having used to it being a little bit slower, and now that it's getting faster and faster, it's like I have to change the way I do things. Yeah, so I think like, Which we, is kind of cool. We want it to just be like instant. Uh, I think the other one I'd mentioned too, and this is kind of one of the smaller but cool ones, I think Lint is really useful because yes. it's like your extra brain. All of, It's like the Rumsfeld quadrant. Things you don't know, you don't know. It tells you to, to look for. So I yeah, really yeah exactly. Because yeah. like, you can end up writing some pretty ugly code without realizing yeah. it. And other people have to maintain it. So the linting tool is really neat. Yes, so. I definitely make mistakes I didn't know I made. <laughs> so they're great. So if yeah. I'm a, like a developer getting started with Android Studio, or with sure. Android in general, or mobile sure. development in general, do you, what, what would you tell me? Like, uh, I would tell you uh, two things. I would tell you download Android Studio, okay. and I would recommend taking a look at Kotlin. I, okay. I think that, again, the inside story of how we adopted Kotlin is essentially that uh, one person after another person tried it and uh, convinced the next person down the line that they had to try it, and they had to try it. It's yeah. one of those languages that you just fall in love with, uh, because the more you use it, the more delightful yeah. you realize it is. Yeah. Uh, so I think I would probably recommend doing those two things. Absolutely. And, yep. and with Kotlin, for example, I, just a funny story for yep. me was that a week before I.O., I was doing some talks at a conference in the UK. Mm -hmm. And they were doing like a round of lightning talks, and I did a talk on Google Maps, and the idea was they wanted to get like an applause meter, mm. and then the Google Maps applause meter was like, it was really good, and I was like, yay, I'm gonna win this thing, and then a guy came on after me and spoke about this thing called Kotlin that I'd never heard of, oh, and the crowd went wild, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I have to learn about Kotlin, and yeah. then the next week I'm sitting in the audience at I/O, and you go do the whole K thing, and we got Kotlin in Android Studio, so I was like, score. <laughs> I'll never excited. forget. The same thing happened to me. Some, I was uh, in London, and someone told me, "You've got to try this language." And you know, it was kind of working its way through the engineering team. And, and I got on the plane. I had you know two books on Kotlin and my laptop and ten hours. And I got on the plane, and I thought, "Wow, 
I, you know, this, I'm not sure we can really put another programming language on Android. And by the time I landed, I was thinking to myself, OK, we got to figure out how we're going to do this. This is just yeah. so awesome. Yeah. Um, and, and I think one of the neat things, yeah. and it was something we did an episode with Jeffrey Van Gogh, and mm -hmm. uh, that what he shared with us is the fact that how it interrupts with existing Java code. Yeah. It's not like if you've got existing Java libraries, you have to throw them away and rewrite them in Kotlin. It's yeah. like you can start consuming, and vice versa. Yeah. Right. And then also the tooling, you've got your file new Kotlin experience. So yeah. you don't feel that you have to start from ground zero to be able to build in Kotlin because you can actually reuse your existing yeah. stuff. I think that's the one thing, too, that um, was also uh, very eye opening for me when I use the language because you think, oh, a new language, I'm going to have to learn all this new stuff and start mm -hmm. over. And what you really want to know is, wouldn't it be cool if? I could be able to write all of my code and write it you know, many times faster, but do it uh, in a way where learning the new syntax, learning the new language is going to be really easy for me and where I can just take little pieces of it at a time. And in fact, that's exactly what Kotlin is. Because I think for most people, they'd say when they learn Kotlin, for anyone who knows the Java programming language already, it's really n not difficult. Mm -hmm. um, it's, there's so many concepts and uh, paradigms that are really familiar. So it's not like you're you know, moving in some huge direction, like you started with Java, and now you're going to learn C++, which I remember when I learned that, and I thought, <laughs> OK, this is hard. Uh, uh, so it's, it's quite seamless. And, and that, plus the fact that you can take an app that's already completely working in Java and then just try a little piece of it in Kotlin means it's so easy to just uh, dip your toe in and get really comfortable. And the IDE makes it so seamless because you can you know, literally just drop a class and it'll convert for you. And it's, it's the JetBrains team is amazing. Cool. So they're really good. Yeah. So for yeah. somebody to get started, Android Studio, we'll put the link in the comments. Mm -hmm. or we'll put the link in the description of the video here okay. so people can go download it. Yep. So thank you so much, Stephanie. Ah. It's been a real blast. Yeah. Having so much fun geeking out over Android Studio with you. It's really cool. <laughs> and thanks, everybody, for watching this episode of Coffee with a Googler. If you have any questions for me or any questions for Stephanie, just please leave them in the comments below. Cool. Thanks again. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you so much. <laughs>